if you think for one single solitary second that I am building a robot today, you are very much mistaken. It's hot. How is it even hotter? I don't want to go anywhere near a soldering iron. That melts metal. All right, come on, let's do it. It's been two days of doing barely anything. Wow. Okay. Come on, I. Let's get to work. Okay, so there is somewhat of a bonus of being robbed of a couple of days this week because, you know, fear of taking a step and just bursting into flames. I've had some more deliveries. And also, I've been watching a lot of videos on soldering. Just for the record, I'll be offering no opinions and no advice on soldering. I'm going to get through this as best I can. There are plenty of videos out there to watch. But yeah, soldering, not the easiest thing in the world. But, you know, I've had a go, I've had a practice, and I reckon I can do enough now to solder the parts as per the instructions from Bristol Pot Builders. But because there's been a couple of extra days, one, I've received my lipo bag for, you know, explosiveness. And two, having had a practice at soldering, I realised, you know, I don't think I have enough hands to do this. So, to Amazon. So I went to Amazon and picked up this little fella which has arrived today. There we go. I'm going to be unboxing that in a second. It's got two little crocodile clips, a magnifying glass, because, you know, my eyesight isn't what it used to be, and a little LED light. So that's going to help for soldering. But also, I'd been really excited when I interviewed Greg Atkins um, back at Portsmouth, I think, uh, on my first show, well, before my first show, and he showed me his termite weight robot which was essentially like a little flat pack kind of uh, do-it-yourself. I don't really know what the correct term is, but they looked really cool. And I thought they look like something that I would like to do in order to understand how a robot works. Well, they came in stock and because I didn't do anything earlier in the week, boom, look what arrived today. We have a DIY battle robot entirely made of flat pack wood and bits and bobs. And I thought, right, before I get going with my little creation, why not give this a go? So Greg said that he could do it in... Two friends and I, over lockdown, we bought a kit of chippings and we built them on Zoom as a sort of like a lockdown project. Right. See who could do this the fastest. So I got 62 minutes. Um, so you made that in 62 minutes? 62 minutes from from, from parts to, to robots. Well, Greg, challenge accepted. Now, I am clearly not actually challenging one of the most respected roboteers in the UK uh, to do anything quicker than him. Uh, building a robot, building anything, frankly, and even if it is from Flatpak. But I do want to talk about the kits. So if you go to Bristol Bot Builders and search for uh, DIY battle kits or, or something similar, you will find these. Now, they're £42 each. Now, with that, it comes with everything from scratch to take you from, not, and and very detailed instructions on both YouTube and, and on paper. I mean, this to me is a no brainer and look at it. It's, it's incredible. And also it looks a little bit like Johnny Five with those eyes. Maybe it's just me. All right, listen, I know that I didn't design this and that this was like, it's a flat pack robot. But in just over an hour, I'm 37 years old and I built this, I put this together and you have no idea how much that has raised my confidence. <laughs> that's what STEM does. It's not just about extreme robots. It's not just about 
engineering, it's not just about the ins and outs. STEM teaches how things actually work, how everything around you in the world works. But more importantly than any of that, this builds confidence. This builds self-confidence. Summer holidays are coming up. And I'm not trying to sell you anything. But if you're a mum or a dad or a guardian or a big sister or an uncle or whatever, and you're looking for something to do with your little ones, your kids, your nieces, your nephews, whatever. I can't tell you how... <clears throat> <laughs> I can't tell you how much... Not only I enjoyed that, but that, that brought back a bit of confidence in me. That like made me think that, yeah, I can, that's, yeah, that's amazing. And what's more amazing is I've been really nervous about building my first robot. And now I've done this, all I want to do is do it. Not like Kevin and Perry for those over the age of 30 who get that reference. All I want to do is do it. Yeah, yeah, I just want to, I want to build mine now. And I know it's hot. I think it's time I did some soldering. Actually, before we do that. Right, look, it's late and I'm an idiot, look. <laughs> I made a robot. And it actually drives me. <laughs> oh, neighbors. Okay, so before we get soldering, uh, I've got the Antweight building kit from Bristol Bot Builders, which seems like a really simple little circuit. Um, I'm going to take you through exactly what I guess the hard bits are, um, and I'm going to try and explain really quickly how everything starts at this and how the circuit works maybe for my own benefit. All right, guys, let's talk this circuit. Now, this is a complete beginner's guide, so I'm going to explain this in the way that I hope somebody would explain it to me at the very beginning of this process. So, here we go. In order for all of this to work, you need power. Now, that power is supplied by the LiPo battery. Now, the LiPo battery has already been charged, courtesy of this little white jobby here. That's for charging. But obviously, we need to get the power out of the battery into our circuit. That's what this is for, this little red jobby. Come to that in a second. So all of our power is coming from here. And nothing will work without power, but nothing will work without brains. And the brains of the whole outfit is right here. This is the ESC, the electronic speed controller. And it is labeled very clearly. And on this side, you will see that it is labeled BAT for battery, and it has M1 and M2. Now those are, I've just got them uh, grabbed by the wrong side there. Those are going to our motors, which are down here. So that's where the soldering is going to happen. I'm going to trim the ends of these and then expose some of the, the cable, to some of the wire, sorry, and then solder it to the N20 motors. So let's come back to that in a second. Motors over here. And that leaves this little fella here which is essentially our little cable that runs from our ESC into our battery. So we're just going to call that our battery cable for now. Now, when we connect this, lo and behold, energy comes from there and runs through our circuit and is shown that it's working there by a red flashing light. Okay. One other thing that we need to solder is partly a safety aspect and partly to, um, to make it uh, well, well, quite functional. So we have our switch here, little switch, goes on and off like every other switch you've ever seen. And our positive cable here is going to be cut in half. We're gonna slice this down the middle and then we're going to solder the wires to one of the inner points on here. I should you can see that very well. One of the inner points and one of the outer ones. Now what that means is, is that that will sit as part of our circuit. So we've got that little switch there. And that means that we will be able to turn the robot off safely without having to disconnect any batteries, without having to go into the, the circuit. So all of the soldering we're gonna to do today, to keep this as simple as possible, is we're going to solder positive and negative, red and black, to positive and negative, 
terminals on our motor. We do that twice, so we have two wheels. If we do both the same way, they should turn right, and we're going to put a switch on, which is a little safety feature there. So, I hope that makes sense. I've already plugged in the receiver here. This is the receiver that goes to the, um, the controller that you hold in your hands. That's as basic as I can think of to explain it. Right, so before we get started, uh, this is the part I've been putting off the most because I find it the most intimidating uh, for a beginner. So um, if I can do this, trust me, you can do it as well. But things you are going to need. You're going to need some solder and a soldering iron, uh, both obviously in the pack I got from Amazon, which was just over 50 quid. You'll also need a pair of snips or a pair of scissors to get through the cable outside the wire. And you will need some LX tape, well, electrician's tape or electrical tape, um, to cover the exposed wires to stop anything shorting out um, and to keep it insulated. So that's what we're going to need. Uh, oh, and also, I got myself this little fella, which was a tenner from Amazon, as we saw earlier in the, uh, the episode, which basically just holds things and allows you to look down and see them better, which I figure I'm going to need all the help I can get. So let's get soldering. Right, I'm not going to lie to you because that's not what these videos are about. These are meant to be complete beginner's guide. Soldering is not easy when you first start out. I had to practice on a few little bits of cable, and little, bit, little bits of wire I could find here and there. But with a bit of patience and a bit of perseverance, it is possible for somebody who's never soldered before to, to do this. The, the kit isn't that complicated. And with a bit of LX tape, I think you'll be fine. I was. Right. Is it perfect? No. Was it ever going to be? No. But I'll tell you what, I'll tell you that for a first attempt. And more importantly than all of that, does it work? Battery, plugged in, red wire, now attached to a switch, no light. The moment of truth. There's a light! <laughs> Success! Okay. Now the motors. Boy, if I thought the switch was hard, I should have done the motors first. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it's difficult. It's fiddly. It, you're gonna get. You're gonna make a mess. So make sure, like Greg Collier said, put something down. Don't damage your dining room table. But in the end, again, perseverance, patience. Is it pretty? No. Did I burn myself? Yes. Did I burn the plastic? Yes. Is it attached? Yes, it is. Let's wrap it and let's see where we're at. All right, so here we go. Battery. Connector. Now has a switch. Goes to ESC. Receiver. Now, <laughs> I think some soldering and some wrapping that they are going to work but first oh god the controller okay so the great thing about the fly sky uh fsi6 is that it's already paired to the receiver which means we should be ready to go if i've done the soldering right and i've plugged everything into the right place i'm going to turn the switch on and we're going to see if this works okay so, switch is off, nothing happening. Let's have a look. Okay, switch on. I've got it all set up. The motors are on clamps. The wheels are attached. So when I push forward on here, Oh man, you have, you have no idea. <laughs> ah, that is amazing. <laughs> Go and do this. Please do this. This is one of the best feelings. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man, I'm just crying over electronics. <laughs> right, I'm gonna stop there for this week, but I can't tell you the sense of achievement of doing that. The, you, go and build a robot. Just go and, go and try. And, and if you want to, get one of those kits first. And just, but the sense of achievement on soldering for the first time. I've never soldered anything before. I've never done, I've never so much as put a plug on a kettle. <laughs> and what it does is give me a huge sense of appreciation for the robots. In particular, the guys I know at Extreme Robots. Like, this isn't a plug, but when you come to one of the shows, uh, this is a plug. There are three left at the end of the year, by the way. Go to extremerobots.co.uk, get your tickets. When I see these monstrous, incredible robots, it's not just about them smashing everything to smithereens, which is great fun. But just doing this, now I have a deeper appreciation for what they've done under the bonnet, so to speak. Man, I knew this community was great and everybody's been so nice and so helpful and given me so much advice and I had so many messages from people. Combat Robotics is a great community. Doing this, it gives you a great feeling. And at the end of the day, you end up with a robot that you can go and smash up. All right, that's enough for today. So to see more of this journey and to see some of the best roboteers, the best designers, and the best robots in the world, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube page. Of course, the links are on the screen below. We're across all social media, so you can catch up with us whenever you want. We have three shows left at the end of the year. Ticket details are available on extremerobots.co.uk. And come back next week when I'll start to get these, uh, these electrics into some sort of robot. Thank you very much for watching because this has been such a brilliant little journey and I'm not even finished yet. And already the sense of gratitude and satisfaction, it's amazing. Go build a robot.